When we opened the doors of the Diet Den last year, 16 supersized and super skinny individuals stepped up to the plate to challenge the way they eat. For one week, they signed up to completely swap diets with their polar opposites. And this actually fills you up. Overseeing the shock switch was Dr. Christian Jessen, who pulled no punches when hitting the swappers with a few home truths. Your hip bones are similar to about a 60-year-old lady's hip bones. In the end, the figures spoke for themselves. Over the series, the super skinnies put on four stone two pounds, and the supersizers shed 14 stone three pounds. But did the success continue when they left the safety of the clinic? Tonight, we're catching up with super skinny Kim and super size Martin 12 months later to see if they stayed on track. It's one of the hardest things I've done, but uh, it gave me the kick in the backside that uh, I needed. And Anna Richardson uncovers the lengths those in LA will go to to achieve the body beautiful. I got a nose top, I got some fat under my eyes, and a chin in place. And we'll see our team of flab fighters take on the Battle of the Bulge. Are you joking? What do you mean? I worked the hardest. I deserve more than any of you. Welcome to Super Size versus Super Skinny. One year on. First up, we take a look back at microscopic marathon runner Kim Fork. This 33-year-old single mum's sparrow-like portions means she's running on empty. At the moment, I think my body's... I think it's too skinny. I'm quite embarrassed about my arms and my legs. As a competitive long-distance runner, Kim trains an average of 11 hours a week, covering a whopping 70 miles. When I'm out running, you get people saying, oh, you don't want to be doing that, love, you want to be down the chip shop. A young son, a busy job and a stressful divorce mean that over the last two years, Kim has left no time to nourish herself properly and her weight has plummeted. I'm always running around, I'm always doing other things, making sure Nathan's all right and everything else all right before I really think about what I'm eating and doing. And not only is she lacking any meat on her bones, she has a phobia of the processed and minced variety too. If you put a minced beef lasagna down in front of me, I'd be like... I don't particularly want to eat that because I don't know what's in the minced beef. Why am I here for camera? An average woman of five foot four should weigh about eight and a half stone. 87 pounds. So at six stone two, Kim is dangerously underweight. Her extreme diet combined with her excessive training is putting Kim's body in the danger zone. Your BMI turns out to be 15.4, which is one of the lowest BMIs that I've seen in a very long time. If I tell you, that Paula Radcliffe, her BMI is 18.1. She trains hard. Very hard. But she eats properly. You can't expect your body to work well without the proper food. If Kim is going to keep crossing the finishing line, she needs a serious shock tactic. She's about to face her toughest competitor yet. Supersize mum of three and takeaway queen, Trudy Alexander. I love Chinese, Indian, pizza, yeah, anything really. With over a 17 stone difference, these two are extreme opposites. Trudy's thigh is three and a half inches bigger than Kim's tiny waist. It's time for Super Size to meet Super Skinny. Hi, I'm Trudy. I'm Kim, pleased to meet you. And you. Oh, it's compared to you. For the next week, they will swap diets, meal for meal. You wait till you see what I eat, love. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait no longer, ladies. It's time to come face to face with their own shocking weekly food intake. Right, so here we go. We're going to start off with your breakfasts. This is the probiotic drink that you have every morning, don't you? That's it? Yes. It's not enough for a marathon runner for breakfast. Let's have a look what you go for through lunch. That's a salad, salad sandwich. That's another salad sandwich. Pretty much every day. I don't know how she could live on it. <laughs> right, let's move on to dinner. Soup? Yeah, more soup. Makes me realise how little solid food I'm actually eating. There's no real substance there at all. It's just fluid. Given all the exercise she's doing, Kim needs around 2,500 calories a day. 
she's actually consuming as little as a thousand calories a day. And by running for two hours a day, Kim is actually burning off over 1,000 calories. So her body is existing on a calorie deficit. And at this rate, with this number of calories, you're going to be losing approximately a pound in body weight a week. So, Trudy, a pasty. For breakfast, yes. And bars of chocolate. Crisp before lunch. Oh, yes, egg fried rice. OK. Sweet and sour chicken balls and sauce. What on earth is that? Oh, that's battered sausage with chips and curry sauce. I must be honest, I'm thinking, how the hell am I going to eat, like, three large meals like that and snacks every day? It's the first night in the feeding clinic. Kim is giving Trudy her usual liquid-based evening meal, vegetable soup and a slice of brown bread. Trudy has given meat-fearing Kim a feast of flesh. Six chicken drummers, a duck breast, topped off with chicken and bacon pasta. When I saw it on the plate, I was so, oh, my God. I'm not particularly enjoying the uh, textures at all, all this bone and mm. skin and, yeah, meat I just don't want to eat. <laughs> Her taste buds might not be appreciating this meat dish, but Kim's body will be more than grateful for the protein. As an elite runner, Kim's muscles are put under extreme pressure and need proteins to help them repair and rebuild. The essential amino acids found in protein-rich foods like meat and fish are needed for the body's central nervous system, immune system and brain function. <laughs> Kim still has a long way to go with her meat marathon, but our dedicated competitor is determined to cross the finish line of her first meal. Well done. <laughs> Coming up, we meet one of our biggest overeating supersizers from last year, breadaholic Martin Knights. Martin, that is probably one of the worst tubes I have seen. And Anna gets a slice of life over in LA. I got a nose drop, I got some fat under my eyes, and a chin implant. <laughs> Super skinny, six stone three Kim is a marathon running mum who never finds time to refuel her body. She's swapping diets for five days and nights with super size 23 and a half stone Trudy. It's lunchtime on day two, and Trudy's taking Kim out to a local Chinese for one of her favourite dishes egg fried rice with deep fried sweet and sour chicken balls. There's your lunch. And Trudy gets her first solid food of the day a salad sandwich but with no butter. This is revolting. It really is horrible. Absolutely awful. It was a horrible experience. I can still smell that horrible, like, chickeny, sweety, sour smell on my fingers. And I've got, like, this vile, sort of greasy film in my mouth. It's like, ugh. The kinds of high-fat, high-salt meat in Trudy's diet isn't helping Kim to overcome her flesh phobia. But you don't have to rely on meat for your protein. Other sources are peas, beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, tofu and dairy products. Kim has ignored the damage that under-eating has done to her body. Dr Christian wants her to face up to the devastating effect her diet is having. You're a runner, you put your body through hell. Seeing this light is a risk factor for osteoporosis. It's a significant problem. It's quite a scary thought. And I do worry long term that my body's just not going to be able to cope with what I've been putting it through. Guess the age of the person in this picture. Um, I'd put her pretty old, to be perfectly honest. Probably 45, 50. I think that looks like an old lady. I really do. That's all right. I just think it looks awful. And I think... I'm thinking about what my son would think if he saw that. It looks horrible. After the painful realisation of what she's doing to her body, Kim now has to face her biggest food phobia. For dinner, it's minced beef in the form of spaghetti bolognese. Kim's had a marathon day of food, but spurred on by Dr Christian and the photos from earlier in the day, this competitor will not be beaten. And she attacks her next meal of battered sausage and chips with the same gusto. 
although I wouldn't eat the quantity that Trudy eats, and I certainly wouldn't eat the types of food that Trudy eats, it's making me more aware that the portions that I eat are far too small, because I've <laughs> shocked myself at the amount of food I've managed to put away, because I thought I'd never be able to do it, to be perfectly honest. Kim is really challenging her deep-rooted food fears, and she's keen to explain to Trudy where these obsessions first came from. Uh, this is about two years ago, just split up then with Nathan's dad. Mm -hmm. Very stressful time. Yeah. When I get emotional, upset, I stop eating and I don't pick out where a lot of people pick and get the comfort from the food. I get very anxious. It's the final meal in the feeding clinic and both Kim and Trudy are glad to be saying goodbye to each other's diets. I still can't get used to it. I'm not going to be following your um, <clears throat> pasty and uh, battered sausage diet, that's for sure. No. <laughs> Now they're at the end of the diet swap shock tactic, it's time for Kim and Trudy to say goodbye and go home to start their 12-week eating plans. I think with this swap, I've done really well. I'm really proud of myself and I know that I'm going to be able to keep it up. I'm Anna Richardson and last year I packed myself off to the good old US of A to find out what lengths the Yanks were willing to go to in order to reach Skinnyville. I'm a typical size 12, but here in LA, I'm positively huge. To fit in in LA, you've got to be cut down to size, literally. Fat biting surgery is a mega bucks industry worth over $12 billion a year. But is the knife a good quick fix solution? I've come to meet elite Hollywood surgeon, Dr. Modicky, to see what he could do for my midriff in this land of flat pat stomachs. We've got a slight problem kind of there. If you want to look a little more athletic, you want to look a little more, have a little more lines to you, we do sculpting. So you can sculpt a waist for me and maybe a bit of a six pack? Exactly. That's called etching and there's a little bit you can do where you can um, sculpt or thin the waistline so that it actually looks like you worked out for, you know, the last ten years but you're cheating just a little bit. Wow. On my way out, I come across some of Dr. Modicky's nurses and see his handiwork close up. Now, um, Rachel, I'm, I'm thinking you've had some surgery. Yes, I did. What have you had done? I got a nose job, I got some fat under my eyes, and a chin implant. Right, in April, he did my like breast. Oh, and seriously? And I had lipo. Can we see your boobs? Sure. <laughs> Brace yourself <laughs> the there, the cameraman's there. gonna drop his camera. Oh, my God. <laughs> and so what did you look like before? Kind of like um, dimply little things on my face because I was short jawed. Have you had anything, Daisy? Because when you look perfect. Ago, Thank you. I did had a nose job a long time ago, like five years ago. How, how old are you? I'm um, 22. 22? 25. 25, OK. Do you know what's freaking me out immediately? Is that all the nurses have had surgery done by Gary, and they're just sitting there casually talking about the boobs. One of them's got massive bruises under her eyes. Not everyone, though, is quite as willing to go down Surgery Boulevard. If you've got the money and fat to burn, you can sign up for one of the many boot camps that are doing big business stateside. I'm here for a full-on seven-hour day of high-intensity exercise. Nice, good. But they're not just burning calories here. With some of the punters on a six-month course, they're also burning a huge hole in their wallets. For you guys to be here, how much does it actually cost? I mean, you're, you're doing a six-week course. How much? Um, about $23,000. $23,000? US dollars. Six months is like $90,000, I think. Around 90, there, like 87. Yes. So let's call it, let's round it off to 90 grand yeah. for six months. OK. And this is all we get for lunch? Yeah. <laughs> Later on, I'll be seeing what the A-list do for lunch. And then how they work it off again. Oh, I can't even slide one leg. Hang on a minute, it's going. No. It's time to revisit snack loving fruit and veg dodging Martin Knights. Martin's terrible eating habits are partly due to his meal times being completely out of sync with his body clock. He works through the night as an engineer on the London Underground. And when he clocks off at 6 a.m., he heads home to spend his day eating, sleeping, and watching daytime television. His favourite food is bread. Um, for breakfast, I normally have bread rolls and um, ham, cheese, 
for lunch, probably the same and probably breadsticks. I'll have bread with everything and I can have at least three quarters of a loaf with curry, no problem. Bread's definitely my biggest problem. Bread, bread, more bread. Ta. As a married man, Martin knows size matters. As his waistline's increased, his love life's shrunk to zero. And that's one thing I want to lose a weight for, so we can be, be a bit more intimate. Since my gut's grown, the sex life's gone down a bit, I'm afraid. At five foot five inches, Martin should weigh around ten and a half stone. Right, Martin, climb on for me. 293 pounds. That's about 21 stone. How does that sound to you? Horrible. He'll be swapping his carbolific diet with super skinny 21 year old Christine Mack, whose fragile frame is proving a losing lot on the love front. I don't like to get into like the intimacy side of a relationship because of my body kind of thing. I feel a bit uncomfortable. She's desperate to catch up with her mates and swap her childlike body for some womanly curves. My friends are more curvy and I would like to be more curvy just like them. Even though they're the same height, with a 14 and a half stone weight difference, Martin's waistline swamps Christine's by more than double. It's time for Super Size to meet Super Skinny. I'm feeling quite anxious now. I don't know what to really expect. Whatever happens, happens. Uh, I know the reason I'm here, so I've just got to aim for it. Hi, my name's Martin. I'm Christine. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. To show them what they have to stomach, Dr Jesson's going to demonstrate exactly what a week's worth of each other's food looks like. First up, Christine and her bananas breakfast. Some cereal. Nothing else. Yeah. Nothing. Let's have a look at lunch. I'll eat a lot of tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Fruit salad. Anything else going to come down there for lunch? Yeah. Martin, what do you think? No, there's definitely there's nothing there. But look at that. That's a week's worth of food. Martin, it's your turn now. Let's start with your first meal of the day. Well, that's uh, ham and cheese and pickle rolls. And you'd have three of those every day, standardly. Yeah. yeah what yeah. else? Let's see what else you have. Whoa! Bread sticks. Biscuits. Yeah. For breakfast. Right, let's have lunch. Let's see what's next. Martin, that is probably one of the worst tubes I have seen. It is all the same colour, the same rubbish, processed, fatty, starchy, salty food. The average man needs 2,500 calories a day. But Martin is munching his way through a colossal 6,400. That's nearly 45,000 a week. A gut-busting overeat of over 10 days' food every week. You're getting through about two and a half kilos of fat a week. That's not all, though. You're also getting about 25 grams of salt a day. You're allowed six. What you're going to eat in Christine's tube is actually far more the sort of things that you should be eating. Martin and Christine are facing a tough five days of food. Christine's diet is not so much of a diet for me. It's more of a, a nightmare. Day one in the feeding clinic, Christine hands Martin her usual banana breakfast while she's about to get her first taste of Martin's bread-based diet. A whole packet of breadsticks with a pot of full-fat garlic and herb dip, plus three filled rolls. All gone. I had an absolutely normal banana. It was boring, bland. And now I know why she's skinny. Now I know why she's that way, because she eats something like that for breakfast. Lunchtime provides some deja vu for Christine. It's another super-sized bread-based binge. For Martin, it's one of Christine's low-fat favourites. Sushi. Something this self-confessed junk food lover has never eaten. I'm dreading this raw salmon. Oh, it even smells sick. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put something on that to make it edible. Martin may be struggling with his sushi, 
that it's actually one of the healthiest foods you can eat. It's low in saturated fat and high in protein. The fish is packed with essential omega-3 fats and vitamin E, which helps reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and lowers your cholesterol. Probably one of the most disgusting things I've tasted in my life. The seaweed wrapping, or nori, is a great source of antioxidants which guard against cancer. Oh. That was definitely the worst thing I've ever eaten in my life, seaweed. That should be illegal. That lunch was absolutely I come very close to actually throwing up all over Christine. Later on, the girls get down and dirty in a final flab-fighting frenzy. Anna Richardson hangs out with the yummy mummies of L.A. There's a few tears at the back there. <laughs> she wants a burger. And a year after they left the clinic, we'll catch up with Kim and Martin. Life's a lot more simple, I suppose, and I'm not scared to do things. I'm not worried anymore. For one week, super-sized bread binger Martin has agreed to swap his diet with super-skinny fussy eater Christine. In order to get a fuller flavour of Martin's diet, the pair of swappers head off for some of Martin's much-loved pub grub. For Christine, it's a full-on helping of a burger and chips and a portion of stuffed potato skins. And for Martin, a plate of Christine's usual fruity affair. While Christine struggles with her mountain of food, Martin's had a revelation and is warming to his vitamin-loaded plate. I enjoyed every bit of that. And the swap is making the shocking reality of his own eating sink in. I can't believe how much I actually eat. It is a big amount when you see somebody else eating it. Back at the house for supper, Martin serves up a family-sized portion of spaghetti bolognese. I wasn't expecting such a big portion. Having made a breakthrough at lunch, he's still reluctant to accept his portion sizes are out of control. I'm struggling to understand like, what drives you to eat so much, Like, because obviously this is, I don't know how you noticed, but this is quite a big portion size for anyone. That is what I eat, and you know, that's it, full stop. No that's one what eats I eat. this much, not this much. I could eat that and then go back for more. Things are not looking any better by breakfast, and Martin is now struggling with hunger-induced mood swings, and his spirits have hit rock bottom. After taking time out to reflect, Martin's back. OK. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm all right now. Cool. How are you? I've calmed down. With a renewed determination, Martin is ready to embrace anything. Exercise is a crucial complement to any healthy diet plan. It increases energy levels and heart and lung efficiency and lowers blood pressure and the risk of stroke and heart attack. By increasing muscle to fat ratio in the body, exercise also raises the metabolic rate, making it much easier to maintain a healthy weight. I don't really uh, do a lot of heart pumping exercise. This is unbelievably bad. This is a whole mind focus thing to, to getting back on track. And I can do it, I know I can do it now, because I've enjoyed this. It might give me the focus to go back to the gym and shed the pounds I want. Hey! It's the final meal, and the impact of the week is clear to see. Whilst Christine tucks into a plate of fatty carbs, Martin's happy with his bite-sized portions. No, it's, it's weird. We've done a little bit of running around and played a bit of basketball, which I enjoyed, and then um, I'm not really that. They're hungry. I love the fact that I can um, think of food in a different way now. Instead of having shovelfuls of it in big bowls, I can make a smaller bowl. Once I've eaten that and I eat it slower, I'm thinking I'm full. It's the end of the week and time for Christian to give them their healthy eating plans. Let me give you your diet plans and we're going to see some good weight loss from you and some good weight gain from you. It's been a really good time here, and I can't wait to come back in 12 weeks and show everyone what I look like. I'm Anna 
Sarah Richardson and I'm in LA taking my quest for the tricks to find the perfect bod to a whole new level. LA, baby. Now, when you're a busy Hollywood celeb, you just don't have the time to prepare healthy, controlled meals in order to keep your body slim, trim and red carpet ready. But that's where these guys come in. Hello, Meet Jackie Keller. She's been making celebrity lunchboxes for over 20 years. But this Meals on Wheels service comes with a celebrity price tag and would set you back by around £750 a month. Can I help prepare a celebrity meal? Yeah, oh, yeah. show me the way. OK, let me... Um... And this is one lunchbox I'm delighted to get my hands on. Word on the street? Tom Cruise. What, what would he like, do you think? Salmon is on his menu. He likes salmon. He has okay. a good fish eater. Four and a half ounces, perfect. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. He gets two scoops of rice. Two scoops of rice. One on either side of the fish. Two scoops? That two looks scoops. vaguely phallic. Mm -hmm. Jackie, I don't know if you're aware of that. <laughs> So you can never have too many peppers no, for no. Mr. Cruz. No. In the interest of research, I've got the guys to rustle me up an A-list dish. And if it's good enough for Tom, it's good enough for me. Look at that. Anna Richardson. Wednesday dinner salad. And then my grilled salmon fillet. My rabbit would like that. If I'm going to get a Hollywood physique, I'll need more than a celebrity lunchbox. I think I need the ultimate A-list accessory. Time for a personal trainer. Hi, are you Val? Hi, are you? Valerie Waters has trained the likes of Jennifer Garner, Cindy Crawford and Kate Beckinsale. Val kicks off with her secret weapon. This is how my clients have changed their bodies. All the celebrities I train use this, and they travel with it, because it fits in your purse. Okay. okay. So, put your foot in the middle. Relax this a little bit. There you go. This is going to burn a ton of calories. Now slide one leg in. Oh, my God, even... Slide one leg Hang in. Hang on a minute, it's going... No, that's, that's okay, quite so tricky. Let's, let's, let's try a little harder. Lower. Oh, my God. There you go. This is really difficult. Well, it's hard to... These pieces of plastic are called valve slides. They're designed to tone the arms and the abdominals while giving you a cardiovascular workout. That's tricky. Isn't that great? That's tough. I know. So I've been in LA, and so far, I'm feeling tremendous pressure already to not eat and to exercise every single day. Everyone feels the pressure to stay slim here, and even having a baby is no excuse to pile on the pounds. Scary when post-childbirth is the most dangerous time to lose weight. I've gone to meet Gabby, who gave birth just eight weeks ago. But instead of taking a well-deserved break, she's already working hard to get back her pre-baby body. Here, to get slim fast, rich new mums have got chefs, nannies, oh, and of course, the ultimate name-dropping personal trainer. Jessica Alba is one of my clients. And you've got to go and see Jessica in a minute, don't you? I do. OK, so Jessica Alba is <laughs> one of your clients. Who else? Halle Berry is one of my clients. I think that when you're pregnant in Los Angeles, I think as with anywhere, you're sort of given you know, you're, you're allowed not to look so great, and it's like, oh, there's a pregnant woman. But afterwards, I think it's there's a lot of pressure to sort of snap yeah. back quickly. Yeah. There is no such thing as post-baby weight in Hollywood. If you're not back inside your size zeros within six weeks of the birth, then you stay inside until you are. But if you're going to banish the baby fat, this is L.A., and a simple trip to the gym isn't going to cut it. Hey guys, it's time to work the booty, so let's take your hands forward. And this expat, yummy, brummy mummy has just the answer. Lose as you extend that leg back, pull the belly in. Working out with baby is the perfect way to get fit. Even ex Brit Anna Friel has done it, sparking a trend that's already made its way to Britain. Down and up, let's do ten more. Tracy Mallet swapped the Midlands for Mulholland Drive to give those LA pelvic floors a pummeling. There's a few tears at the back there. <laughs> She wants a burger. And because she's witnessed the LA dream firsthand, Tracy knows exactly what extreme measures these new mums will go to. How quickly in this city do you think they need to be seen to be getting back into their genes? Well, typically, like, maternity leave is not very long. And because of that pressure, they will go to the extremes. They'll do liquid diets. You know, I've heard of women doing, you know, like, the liquid diet, and they end up, like, a breastfeeding at the same time. And they end up, the child ends up getting sick. They end up going into hospital. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, it's insane. There is evidence to suggest that these post-baby weight loss schemes are dangerous. Let's hope there are fads that go bump in the night.
It's been three months since Kim and Trudy left the feeding clinic with their tailor-made eating plans. Today they're back and it's time to find out if their new diets have made any difference on the scales. I'm actually feeling quite nervous about finding out how much I've put on and how my measurements have changed because with all the marathon training that I've been doing, I've been finding it quite tough to actually put on the weight. I just seem to be eating and eating and eating. Kim's eating and eating and eating is designed to help her put on one pound a week. She's increased her daily calorie intake from a paltry 1,000 to 2,900. She's more than doubling her carbohydrate intake to provide essential energy for her running. And she's introduced more protein-rich foods to encourage muscle repair. And with a good solid breakfast to start off every day, she's no longer running on empty. But has it all been enough? It's time for Kim and Trudy to find out if it's all been worth it. Come and meet. Yes, you look amazing. You. Fuller in the face, the cheekbones is back, you know, because you were really quite sunken. Yeah. And all, all across the top half, you, you just look better. You look really beautiful. And not only that, you have also managed to put on weight. Hey. You have put on four pounds on top of all that. And are you enjoying food now? Yes, I am. I'm enjoying the food. I'm cooking chilies and curries at home. So there have been quite a few big changes, but it's been good. Excellent. Yeah. Trudy? Well, again, I have to say I'm pretty chuffed with you too, because you have gone and managed to lose over a stone and a half. You happy? Very. Yeah? Today I feel really pleased with the results. I'll be definitely be sticking to the diet plan because it's made such an improvement in my running. I'm hoping to put a bit more weight on, so yeah, this is just a stepping stone to keep going forwards. So the swap was a runaway success for Kim, but did Martin find his plan the next best thing since sliced bread? It's been six weeks since Martin left the diet clinic. Martin's bulk-busting plan involves reducing his portions by half, increasing his intake of fresh fruit and vegetables, and swapping his processed simple carbohydrates like white bread for healthier complex ones like whole grains and brown rice. Martin's plan aims to get him eating 3,500 calories a day, gradually reducing this over time to the recommended daily intake of 2,500 for a man. He's also put a stop to his bread binging. I don't really eat that much bread most of the time, but when I eat bread, it's things like small pita breads. Uh, you just cut them in half and stuff them with healthy food. It's D-Day for Martin and swap partner Christine, and time to see if they've put their weighty issues to bed. Hello, Christine. Oh, my God, you're really good. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? They've both worked hard at their diet plans, but will the scales show a difference? Previously, Christine weighed a scarily small six stone seven pounds. Now, I can tell you, you're seven stone three. Oh. You have put on ten pounds. That's cool. And that is more than cool. That is really, really good. <laughs> Before, Bread Binger Martin weighed a massive 21 stone. Well, now, you are 20 stone, dead on. So you have lost 13 pounds. That, for me, is about a stone, actually. I think it's fair to say you've lost a stone. Fantastic. A considerable feat, as muscle weighs more than fat, and all that iron pumping will have made him gain weight. And do you know what? Your body shape is changing as well. Yeah. Will you keep this one on? 150% guaranteed, yeah. yeah. I feel fantastic now, so I'd be stupid to myself to go backwards. to my fat-biting club. Over the last series, my girls tackled their food vices from cheese to chocolate. I eat chocolate because it replaces my lack of sex. Pizza to cake. I love cake so much. Using calorie-busting activities with a twist. Was all that cake eating worth this pain? Yay. Today, I'm taking on this lot's final and possibly biggest vice, booze. <laughs> All right, ladies, I think it's fair to say that we all like a tipple. Babkas, devils. Anything else, Trace? Might have a bottle of wine, might have a lager. We all know it is unbelievably calorific. In order to burn off all of that drinking, 
You may have noticed we're at Brands Hatch here, and I have got seven very dirty cars. Vigorous hand washing of mucky cars over half an hour, we will burn off around 150 calories, which is equivalent to a glass of wine. Anybody want a glass of wine today? Yeah. yeah. Pick your car now. Now, I'm not recommending you burn off a binge drinking session, but if you'd like to indulge in the occasional tipple, no more than two units a day for women or four for men, you can offset the calories with my flab fighting activity. <laughs> Kel Surprise, Donna and Bev doing absolutely nothing. Double vodka and regular tonic clocks in at 143 calories, or 29 minutes of car washing. Whilst a pint of sweet cider with a mega 250 calories will see you scrubbing the bonnet for a good 50 minutes. You may notice that on my tray there are five glasses of wine. That's simply because some of us, more than others, have been working. Jack, would you like yours? Yeah, Trace, you did really well. And you get a glass as well. Carol Ann, your car is definitely the cleanest. There you go. And Karen gets one as well. Oi. And Tracy. <laughs> Guess who doesn't? <laughs> Guess who doesn't? No way. <laughs> this lot were actually washing. <laughs> Over eight weeks, my ladies pulled together and got stuck into fighting the flab. And despite the occasional bit of slacking, they managed to lose an impressive five stone in weight. I'm really enjoying um, the feeling of losing weight, and that now is more important than a biscuit. So I've learned that you can have what you want as long as you exercise. I feel so much more happier in myself and the way I look, definitely. I do feel really proud of myself, and I'm really proud of all the girls. Well done, flab fighters. Coming up, Anna slims down LA style. You could even go further and push in your waist here. Please do. And we see how Kim and Martin are doing one year on. It hurts, but that's what it's supposed to do. Last year, I was in L.A. to find out just how far they'd go to reach the body beautiful. Now I'm stepping into the shoes of a busy celeb for the day to really get under the skin of being skinny in L.A. I have an important photo shoot lined up with photographer to the famous Michael Segal, who snapped the likes of Kate Hudson and Antonio Banderas. So what do busy Hollywood stars do when they don't have time for dodgy surgery or crank diets? They go for some real L.A. magic. First stop, I do what any self-respecting satin-skinned starlet would do. Great, excuse me. <laughs> Don a giant baby grow and get suckered by a vacuum-powered roller. It's called endomology. It's claimed the action of the machine eliminates toxins to restore smoothness and reduce fat cells. And after a special spray tan that uses shading to give the impression of muscle tone, it's six hours in hair and makeup before I'm ready to be squeezed into my figure-hugging dress. I'm scared by how minuscule this looks, but it's got star credentials. Even Catherine Zeta-Jones and Christina Aguilera have been suckered into this baby. You look so skinny right here. Yeah. Look, look at that. that, like right here. Look at how thin you look. Pummeled, scrubbed and squeezed, I'm ready for my close-up. And I've even got a bit of LA canine arm candy. Bow wow. Perfect. That's it. And after the shoot, the real magic happens. For a bit of fast-track fakery, meet my new digital trainer, photo surgeon Joe Paleo. You have two photos here. These are the raw ingredients. Tell me what you think. Well, the biggest flaw is that your breasts look massive. What I could do is take your top from the other photo and place it over that one. Oh, or wow. Other things I could do is your arms look pretty hefty mm -hmm, there, so mm -hmm. I could use a tool that's called Liquify. So that's the arm I should have been born with. I could even go further and push in your waist mm -hmm. here. Please do. You give me the gym body I've <laughs> always dreamed of. The pictures we see of big A-list stars, mm -hmm. that is not what they really look like. They have been retouched to within an inch of their lives. I would say 99.9% .9 of the time. This process is hideous. It's making me look at these images in a whole new way. 
LA's revealed the ridiculous extremes people go to to achieve the perfect skinny bod. Oh, my God. That was knackering. But even when stars with all the fitness trainers and dietitians' money can buy resort to computer trickery, one thing I've realised, it's all a con. It's been a year since marathon running Kim left the diet den, and looking back, she can see that the tough week has made a world of difference. 12 months ago, I wanted to go into the clinic to put on weight because I'd lost so much. I'd lost nearly two stone, and I wasn't happy with the way my life was. I'd lost my confidence. 12 months on, that's changed quite a bit. My confidence levels have improved. That's resulted in me finding a new job. Good and there's a lot more confidence just going out, doing things like going to the gym, wearing skirts and perhaps a little bit more body confidence in myself. Life's a lot more simpler, I suppose, and I'm not scared to do things, I'm not worried anymore. Kim's taken up the challenge of changing her diet head on, and it's clear the effects have been life enhancing. Um, now I'm actually eating three proper meals a day, having a good solid breakfast, lunch, a proper cooked dinner. I'm definitely reaping the benefits of the diet plan. Um, my running's improved, got a lot more energy. My days are still really, really busy, but the fact that I'm eating properly, I'm able to cope. So when I get home to Nathan, I'm not absolutely exhausted. I can spend some time with him. And as a result of the changes in lifestyle, Kim now sees herself differently. When I look in the mirror these days, I see a lot happier and a lot healthier person. Still got a fair way to go. Um, but it's certainly improved to what it was, and it's not a skeleton anymore. My face is filled out, I've got a lot more colour, um, I'm looking a lot healthier. I'll never go back to the old diet and the old me. I have changed forever. It's a lifestyle change that I've made, and it's improved everything no end, so there's no way I ever want to go back to where I was. And Kim isn't the only one who's been putting in the miles. Supersizer Martin went from being overweight to a prize-fighting heavyweight. I'm feeling fantastic, um, a lot more energy. Um, it's just been an absolutely fantastic journey. Very hard, I would say. It's one of the hardest things I've done. But uh, it gave me the kick in the backside that uh, I needed to do the job. Martin no longer works the night shift and this has helped him stay off the old carb-loaded diet. I've cut the bread out, I don't eat bread. Um, that is the biggest thing, cheese. Don't really touch cheese. I've really taken on board what Christian told me and um, my diet just doesn't consist of all the crap I used to eat before. It is all good stuff. And it's not just his food that's changed for the better. This was my stepson's room. Um, now it's my gym. I'm in that gym every day. I'm in the gym at least an hour, maybe two. It hurts, but that's what it's supposed to do. It's never supposed to be easy, and uh, I enjoy it now. It's keeping me going, and I do feel good after it. I'm fitter. Positive changes in diet and lifestyle have had a massive effect on the way that Martin now feels about himself. My confidence levels have gone through the roof. You know, I, I can I can do anything now. I feel great. I look younger. My face has gone down. I haven't got three chins anymore. My clothes are slack on me. Um, a lot of the clothes I did have, I've, I've binned about five or six bin bags now. And has life changed in the bedroom? My sex life has improved. It lasts a hell of a lot longer. It's just improved. We're like rabbits now compared to before. We've gone back to when I first got married. I am feeling fantastic compared to what I was feeling before. I never, ever will go back. I'm always going to go forward now because to feel how I felt before would just be stupid. Now, almost one year on, Kim and Martin have come back to catch up with Christian and find out if all their efforts in the last year equals results on the weighing scales. I'm looking forward to seeing Kim and Martin again today because during their diet swap, they were very determined characters and I really want to see if they've been able to keep up this determination one year on. Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. You do look a, a new woman. 
a lot better, a lot of positive changes. It's all been really good the last year. Did you believe it would actually work? A bit sceptical, to be fair, because yeah. you always are and you don't know what you're letting yourself in for, but it's all been positive. I've seen all the changes. I've got a lot more confidence with my body and the way I look. Um, I'm a lot more confident getting undressed in the gym, things like that. I don't mind people seeing me mm. in my underwear and this. And if ever I'm having a bad day, I always go back to that photo, the one with my spine. You do? Yeah, I've still got that, and I go back to that, and it puts me straight back on track again. Yeah. It's not a problem. So let me introduce Martin. Martin, come on in. It's nice to see you too. Nice to see you. So Martin was a 21 stone total breadaholic. And now what? All the bread's gone, dips have gone, don't have anything like that anymore. Total change in food. And how are you feeling? Oh, totally different person. New man. Yeah, totally different person. So what's different about your diet now? What are you eating that you weren't before? I have vegetables now where I never used to have vegetables. Um, I have my broccoli literally with most of my meals now. Kim's achieving her best running times, but will her weigh-in results be just as positive? You, madam, amazingly, have not only improved your own personal records and continued to improve them over the year, you've also gone and put on six pounds, which I don't quite believe, but it's happened. My scales don't lie. Are you surprised? Yeah, I am surprised. It has been tough and I've had to keep a close eye on it, but yeah, I'm really pleased with that. From a medical point of view, your BMI, you know, is normal, so all the risks of having a very low BMI will be disappearing. Amazing. Martin has made so many changes to his diet and lifestyle, but this weigh-in will hopefully prove to him that it's all been worthwhile. How do you think you've done? I don't know, I'm sure you're going to tell me, though. You were 21 stone, now 18. Brilliant. I don't believe that I'll go back, because it's coming off now slowly, but it's coming off and it's not got back on yet. Amazing. My goals for the future are to keep like putting on the weight, staying healthy, just seeing my running improve and just the energy levels, because as my son gets older, he's got more energy, so I need more. My weight's going to go down and down and down, and I'll be able to buy new, more new clothes. As soon as I can go in there and I can knock the X's off what I'm wearing, I've got two more X's to go, and then I'm in the singles, and that's what I want, and I'm going to get it.